the jump. But whilst Lisa soared, Amy froze. She's not going to do it. What a shame. Tonight, more bone crunching action as the men hit the skeleton track. Oh, that's the start. I didn't think it was going to be that quick. Oh, very fast. This is where I anticipate blacking out. That's going to cost you. I wasn't expecting it to be so dangerous. Are we joking? The Olympians gonna struggle. <laughs> you say the wrong five times. Very, very scary. And the price of failure is the jump. to leave the competition after it all just became too much. Uh, our remaining ten continue to tackle the world's most challenging winter sports in the hope of avoiding the most terrifying elimination on TV. One of them will become champion of the jump 2014 and walk away with our Carabao trophy. But that's a long way off for these guys. And before then, they are going to be fighting every night for the top position in their events. The slowest two celebrities each night will head up there with the helmets in their hands and then back down with their hearts in their mouths as they take on the jump. Now, there are three jumps to choose from. There's the K-15, which might look like the little one, but as Amy showed last night, standing at the top and looking down really, really is terrifying. is the K24, which is even more terrifying. And finally, the daddy of them all is that massive K40. Who's that up there? Is that you, Eddie? to avoid the long journey up there. Uh, but girls, you can actually be a little bit smug tonight, can't you? Yeah, yeah because they've already done tonight's event. Because, boys, it is your turn tonight. Uh, it is the men's skeleton, and this really does hurt, doesn't it? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. So here's a trainer, Britain's current Olympic champion, Amy Williams, with uh, a little reminder of how it works. Skeleton is all about getting down the track as fast as you can. It's that crazy adrenaline rush that I absolutely love, the speed, I love the thrill. It's so fast. The fastest I got to in Vancouver for the Olympic race was 92 miles per hour. From Great Britain, Amy Williams. Our athlete should hit about 60 miles per hour, and believe me, that will feel terrifying. Competing at the Olympics is every athlete's ultimate dream. I had trained from start to getting my Olympic medal. It was eight years. Our new skeleton athletes will be fast forward in that. And Amy Williams takes the goal for Great Britain. Physically, you want to be basically a little powerhouse. It's all about the speed, the sprint. Mentally in the sport, you've got to be brave, you've got to be fearless. It looks like we lie on the sled and do nothing. However, you maybe are doing about three or four steers in every corner through our shoulders or little head movements or toe taps. Very, very sensitive and perfect timing is key. It can be dangerous when it goes wrong. You have no brakes, so it's about remaining calm. If you hit a wall, keep your position, and the next corner's gonna come quick enough. It's not nice when you crash. It's all about getting the right angles out of corners. And if the angle's completely wrong, it just wants to spit you out. I think our new skeleton athlete will be very, very nervous. It's the unknown of that first run. You know, the skeleton really can be so painful. And one of our boys knows that better than anyone. Let's see, our first celebrity in training. Crashing into a wall has never looked so stylish. Breath. I want a valve on my helmet because it will be half tears, half sick. Okay, feet together. Happy as you can be. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> oh, 
Henry's bashing against the sides pretty much from the start of the run. Every time he takes a hit, he looks across to the other side and then hits the other side as well. Was it the scariest thing you've ever done? <laughs> I have gone through what is the most horrifying experience of my entire life, I think. It freaked me out to, to a massive, massive extent. It really was very, very scary. Henry's had a really bad day. He panicked on the way down, going through the labyrinth, let go of the sled, came down hard on his hand, uh, and he's gone off to hospital. So I had a CT scan, and I do have a little breakage in there, which means I'm, I can't compete in any of the other events, which obviously when you've done two months training is very upsetting. So this is the end of the jump for me. Such a shame because I've worked so hard. Um, I've really kind of pushed myself to the edge of my abilities to have to have been. Honestly, Henry, that is so sad. I'm so Hello. show me, show Hello. me. Shall show I do me. the reveal? Oh my <laughs> giddy aunt! I know. So what what happened? What is the injury? So the injury is it's a little bone just between my thumb and my wrist, and I shattered it into seven places. Just little seven pieces, and it is now fitted together with three titanium pins. So You're that is a wonderful memory of Innsbruck that will forever remain oh, in no. me. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Henry. I know, I Look, know. I mean, even more sorry that after all the work that you've put in, it must be so frustrating for you. It is. It's really, really frustrating. But, you know, it's one of those things I've had the most amazing time. Have you? I really have. I got to do pretty much everything as well. And what's been your favourite memory? My favourite memory? Well, actually, meeting all of these guys, you know, we're a little ski family. Oh, we are a little ski family. <laughs> you know, because you come into something like this and you think it's going to be sort of, you know, the equivalent of the Hunger Games. And <laughs> <laughs> growling at each other and, and, and you actually know, maybe, you learned how to growl didn't you growling growling away but actually you know, we're a big ski family and it's it's been really really well, really wonderful we've loved having you on the show thank and you thank you much. so much for sorry thank to say goodbye so with henry out of the competition <laughs> we have one place to fill but the question is with who well i've got not one but two celebrities who have been doing some secret training so let's meet them I'm Donald McIntyre, and I'm an investigative journalist and broadcaster. I've just been beaten up by a bunch of football supporters. I'm Joe McEldry, and I'm a singer. I won X Factor back in 2009. Joe! The thought of jumping off a ski jump is terrifying. I feel a little bit weird about this. Your mind's telling you not to do it, but your body's like, come on. In investigative journalism, it really has its scary moments. I've had more than my fair share, but trust me. Nothing compares to this. When I'm presented with a bit of a competition, I do throw myself into it and really go for it. That is, like, it's scary. What's not to like if I've been thrown off a mountain at speed? It really is just Action Man Central. It never gets easier watching somebody take a tumble off those shots. So either Joe or Donald will be joining us on the jump. Now, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Right, it's, co it's called the jump. Nobody wants to jump, but they want to be on the jump. So let me just think about this. How are we going to choose between them? Hmm, let me think about that. Oh, OK, then. They're both going to jump. <laughs> the one who jumps the furthest will join us in the competition. Barry Davis is in the commentary box. And they're waiting, well, I would think, high pulse rate, it's going to be the younger man to go first. Pop start, Joe McKeldery. Coming off the hill, getting himself sorted, and away he goes. And not a bad go, not a bad jump. Deserves the applause. Got reasonably well tucked and did get a bit of lift. And uh, well, you can see for yourselves roughly where he is. I'm not going to give anything away. His opponent has been watching on alongside him up at the top. 
Is it going to be the pop star or is it going to be the investigative journalist? Donald McIntyre. A little more than twice the age of Joe. All he needs is half a metre more. Upright then into the tuck. And... Going to be close. Going to be very close. Well, they both completed the jump. They both landed in style. Oh, I think the younger man may have got the greater distance. We shall see. Tough. Who is it who's going to go on to substitute for Henry in the rest of the competition? And uh, Rina I'm, I'm is with, down to talk to them. Thank you very I'm with our two jumpers now. You, you both did an amazing job off the K24. So let's find out who is joining us. So, Joe, you jumped first. Let's reveal your distance. Oh, how are you feeling? Uh, apart from looking like a roll-on deodorant. <laughs> um, we're, we're not too pretty. No, that is a magnificent jump. That is a magnificent jump. So let's see then what you got. You need to beat that uh, jump in order to join the jump. So your jump was... Amazing jump, 11 and a half metres, absolutely fantastic. Well, I got off, but it's nowhere close to Joe, so well done, Joe, amazing right. jump, well done. Great. Well, you're a great sport, Donald, thanks very much, and thank you so much for being with us and training us. We'd love, we've loved having you with us. But, Joe McAldry, you will not be inv involved in tonight's skeleton, but you will join the competition from the next winter sports. So, Donald, I mean, you are stepping down, but don't go too far away, because we're probably going to need you by the end of part three. Um, coming up... We kick off tonight's skeleton with Marcus and Darren. They're going to need to grit their teeth because, unfortunately, we didn't grit the ice. <laughs> Welcome back to The Jump. We are live in Austria. It is minus nine, but that is nowhere near as chilling as what our celebrities are putting themselves through, as tonight it is the men's skeleton. The slowest two will face the jump at the end of the show, and one of them will leave the competition. OK. It is time for our first race of the evening, and this guy, he's got funny bones. Let's hope he can keep them in one piece. Two of my absolute favourite things in the world are going fast <laughs> and lying down. If it is quite heavily focused on simply lying down, I don't want to say too much, but I'm in with a good shot. I really like lying down. It's not only laying down. <laughs> I think I've offended the coach. This here, this is where I'm going to do my first wee. We're going to be going very fast, lying down very close to the ice. This is where I anticipate blacking out. Honestly, I can't wait. Put me on a train. I'm, I'm ready. Marcus, I love the fact that he just was bubbling with excitement and loved every second of it. It's a little bit far forward. <laughs> Well, who would have thought it? Marcus Briggs is a natural at skeleton, and the key is he really enjoys it. Okay, nice and calm. And when you enjoy something, you relax, and when you relax, that's when you do it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did you enjoy it? Just hold me for a while. As scared as I was, I did not want that to end. <laughs> what a bus! You like I want to go again? Yeah, brilliant. I want to go again. Man. Brilliant. Whoa. Welcome to Marcus. I mean, you really enjoyed that. I tell you what, Davina, whatever else happens, I'm coming back here to do that again. Uh, seriously? Yeah, I loved it. It's, and it's, no matter how it's turned out, it's the rawest thing. The ice is right there, just right past your face. Properly terrifying and brilliant. Loved it. So you're looking for a good time here? Yeah, I don't. I do yeah. not want to jump. Now, <laughs> all, all our boys have completed their skeleton, but none of them know their time. So, Marcus, let's see you in action. It's race time. Welcome back to the sliding centre here in Eagles. Yesterday, we saw our female athletes take on the skeleton course. Now it's the time for the men. 
First to take for the course is Marcus. He loved the skeleton in training. Will he love it today? Before I do this final race run, I would like to firstly apologise and secondly withdraw all comments about it's just lying down. OK. Uh, I know it's more than that. It's all well and good in practice, but can he deliver today? Oh. Marcus, who is a stand-up comedian, was in jocular mood on the last day of training. Good high line, that'll give him pace. Whoa. This is a nice run. Whoa. This is looking like a very good performance from him. 19.99, the split time. Going very quickly, very smoothly, very nice line. He's a bit high there. Every bump will count against him. And coming to the speed gun, whoa, a whooping 95.34 kilometers per hour. Coming down to the final bend, which is a bit of a test of this right-hander. But he does it very well indeed. And comes to the finish and really has set a very good standard. So, so confident. He was so confident. How do you think he did? I'd, it's so hard to tell. I didn't get to see any of the other guys do their run. I saw a couple of them start, and they were similar to me in that, you know, a little bit of ping-pong off the walls. But, uh, look, whatever else happens, that was the thrill of my <laughs> life. So it's all good. So let me tell you, you completed your skeleton in... 45.246. Now... At this stage, the girls. Yeah, what? Not as quick as the girls. No, not as quick as the girls. Yeah. <gasps> uh, what can we say? Good, I'm sorry about job, that. Good job they separated us. <laughs> um, at this stage, the leaderboard tells us almost nothing. Um, but that well, will you change. say that, that, but I'm actually you are at the top of it. Also, so. as we know, <laughs> no need to be rude. Marcus, everyone! <laughs> right, Alex. Alex, so with the boys. Richie, you took on the jump on the first night. Yeah. On one. Does that eliminate a little bit of the fear in case you have to do it tonight? Show one, jump one. That is some big pressure. Um, I felt, you know, I did rise to the occasion, but probably about 2%. Shows about 2% off. But if we've got to go up there, I'm telling you, my uh, cheeks will be flapping. <laughs> and, Steve, it's a skeleton tonight. I've got to ask you, what does it feel like to basically be propelled as a human cannonball down an ice shoe? Horrible. Absolutely <laughs> horrible. The first time of going off, I was white as a sheet. I didn't want to go down. Some of these guys had gone down before, and they came back and said, it's the worst thing they've ever done. I wasn't looking forward to it at all, and I got absolutely mullered. And also, as well, like, I was at the training, and I could hear from the top of the jump, every time someone bashed the wall, it was a horrible noise. Like, how much? I, I felt sorry for the guys that got to repair the ice afterwards on those walls, because I knocked quite a lot of them off. <laughs> and, Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank that you. Was, that was some jump up there. You've kind of set your stool out a little bit there, haven't you? Well, I felt the pressure. Um, I didn't want to be the first person to fall on national telly live. <laughs> um, but I, I, it's just about trying to stay calm, but it's so hard when you're up there, and the middle jump... It, it might not look as bad, but it, when you're sitting up there, it's so scary. And like Richard, you must feel a little bit more confident having done it. Yeah, but it never gets easier. Every time you think that when you go up there, it's going to be easier, you get up there and the nerves all come back. So, yeah, still nervous. Well, good luck to the rest of you in the skeleton tonight. I mean, I've got fewer bones in my hand that I could break, and I still wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> back to you, Davina. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. OK, time for our next contestant. He's no stranger to sporting achievements. Sadly for him, this definitely isn't cricket. So the idea is to be tight, tight in here, not go up here. I've always been looking forward and excited about this one event, but when I turned up this morning, my heart just went probably up about 10 beats. It did, it just, the adrenaline just went boom. You think you're quite confident? No, tick is going, tick is going big time. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit more nervous than I thought I would be. Darren normally loves going fast. He's our king of speed, but the skeleton track made him very nervous. This is your time. It shocked me how quick it was. I didn't think it was going to be that quick. It's just like a bing bong ball. I couldn't even move when we finished. I was just in shock. You are right. There's not a lot of things shake me up. But that is different gravy. In what we call, say, in Yorkshire. Different gravy. That was a lot faster. <laughs> Marcus, do you want to say anything to Darren? I think... Um, I don't know what I should say. Uh, your position is not really good. Uh, your shoulders should go down if it's possible. Uh, you hit the ball, I don't know how many times. He should work, he, he should do nothing. That would be best. <laughs> Darren took some big hits. He's got to avoid doing that in the competition. Because every time you hit the wall, it slows the sled down. That shook me up. I was genuinely scared. Do you know something? Competition day, I'm really going to give it my all. I really want to be as quick as I can, but safe. You know, Dan, the, the thing is, is that... I'm going to turn 
And the thing is that the problem with that is you want to give it your all, but they're saying do nothing. How hard is doing nothing when you want to give it your all? I'm pretty good at doing nothing. Um, but I, I do. I want to be as fast as possible. I do love speed. I've got motorbikes at home, and um, I do enjoy it. But obviously, technically, there, uh, the every hour you go up this corner, you come down, and I took some big, big hits. And I've got the bruises to show, but uh, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. After the first run, it was a very enjoyable experience. And I'd love to do it again. From the top, though, next time. <laughs> Well, you did do it several times, and let's see how you did it at race time. It's time to take a look at you in the skeleton. It is indeed race time. Next up is Darren Goff. Well, he was pretty fearless going down the uh, giant slalom course, and he came to the skeleton, and life changed. He found it very difficult indeed. Head straight, take a hit, let it hit, keep looking forward. Feet together. He's getting too many bumps. Everyone costs him time. Gosh, have a few bruises from that. Comes into the uh, Chrysler. Gets a better line now after a really worrying start. That's nearly two seconds slower than Marcus at the split. He pulled a few bounces in his career, but he could do without them now. But his speed, his speed is 96.63. That's the fastest speed on the track so far. The right hand turn, corrected it, and he comes to the finish, pretty bumpy exit too. There's something about watching you on this show, I spend the whole time going, oh, oh. hi! Was, I was there when you finished that run, and you got off that run and you were not happy. Why was that? You want me to tell you why I wasn't happy? Um, because I'd done three practice runs and I thought after the first one I did pretty well. Um, but then suddenly you got that camera on there and I didn't, I didn't enjoy it at all. And on the second corner I just lifted my head and I just went bang, 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 bang. Four bangs on the second corner, which you can't afford. As you saw, I got quicker as the look. course went on. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got much quicker as the course went on. Yeah. But if you don't have the speed at the start, I suppose it's yeah. so difficult, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not going at 46. OK, so let's have a look and see. Um, we can see Marcus's time up there on the leaderboard. It is 45.246. That's the time to beat. Have you done it? Let's find out. No, you haven't. 47. Uh, so, Darren, 47.418. Um, just under two seconds slower. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I expected it, I really did, and it was an event I was really looking forward to, the skeleton, because I, I do like the speed and that, and uh, having to go out of bobsleigh. But unfortunately, I ate too many corners early on, and you yeah. can't afford to eat corners in the skeleton. Well, two down, we've got two to go. Coming up, Sir Steve Redgrave and Richie Neville take on the skeleton, but who will face the jump? Don't go anywhere. We are live in Austria where our boys are taking on the skeleton. Come on, the boys. And Alex, unsurprisingly, is with our girls. <laughs> Sunita, congratulations on winning Thank the you. jump off last night. Let's have a little look at your triumphant moment. Let's have a look. The what was going through your mind up here? Oh, do you know what? I've got a, this mantra. I say I'm safe, I'm stable, I'm confident. Okay. Easier said than done when you're looking down at that, though, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. There you go. It was, it was a great oh jump. God. You looked so relieved to have just landed. Oh my gosh, to land on your feet, it's the best feeling. And then the cheers, and everyone's so happy. And, you know, I mean, I didn't sleep the night before because I had a feeling that I hadn't had a good skeleton run because I hated it so much. And you had all your family here oh, to support family, you. Did that help you? My baby, yeah, it was so exciting, so nice. And just, you know, we're, they're having like a vacation. Zach's learning to ski. Yeah. You, and mommy went jump. Mama went jump. When Mama went jump and landed <laughs> safely, thankfully. <laughs> Back to you, Davina. Thanks. So, Sunita, slightly being upstage there by her extremely cute boy. <laughs> oh, he's gorgeous. Oh, oh. Thank you, so, Davina. No, not you. <laughs> You've not made us so, are you? <laughs> So, let's bring it back to the men's skeleton. Right, <clears throat> Marcus and Darren have raced already, and so far the leaderboard looks like this. We've got Marcus in first place with 45.246, and Darren in second place with 47.418. The skeleton should suit our next contestant because it's a little bit like a boat, except you travel face first without a paddle. It's peasy. There's no way I'm going to fit in there. Oh, we're joking. Big skeleton riders are about 90 kilos. I'm 120, just under six foot five. <laughs> Is that the biggest? You'd hardly get one or two cups of tea on that track. Knowing that you are a lot larger and the sled's so small, I think it's just maybe playing on his mind a little bit. Okay, good luck. 
he is the ex-athlete, and I think everyone else expects him automatically to be good at all these sports that he's never done before. Steve is hitting the sides way too much, more than anybody else. Your height is a disadvantage for us. Yeah, very much so. I'm longer than anybody else. If you had more body on the, on the sled, then there's less it to, uh, to whip around, around it. So you've got more overhanging out the back out and the out front. the front. Yeah. Yeah. And that means bigger levers. Yeah. And so... no sign saying long load. <laughs> Steve needs to work on a technical aspect of this sport. If he doesn't get the steering right, when it goes wrong for him, it goes horribly wrong. Steve's a professional. He will not let anything get the better of him. What can you do? I'll come for green death and, and hope it's going to be over. Welcome to Steve. Um, you know, you are Sir Steve Redgrave, and there is a certain amount of pressure, I think, that people expect so much from you. Do you feel that? I certainly don't think skeleton's my sport. <laughs> but you're so tall, and the tray's so tiny. It was like a, hang a handkerchief. If it was a yes. blazer pocket, it could go in there quite easily. No, I'd say it was, it was very small for me. So how do you feel it went? Um, actually, of the five runs that we had, the best one was the race. Well, the, the other ones were just awful. That's how you want to play it. So let's see you in action. It is race time. Join us again at the sliding centre for the men's skeleton event. And the next up, the Olympic rowing champion, five times indeed, Sir Steve Redgrave. Well, this is probably the most difficult task for Sir Steve Redgrave. He's a big man, six foot five, and it's a very small tray. Got a bump there, made lots of contact with the walls on the final training session. Doing a bit better this time, a little knock at the start. Very low line round the Chrysal, that will cost him a bit. Over a second quicker than Darren at 20.38, but not as quick as Marcus. Left hand turn, he takes well, a little bit high, and a bump there, another bump there, and he's snaking a bit. Not a good left hand turn. I'm going nicely. This is a much, much better performance than the last practice, but isn't that par for the course for this man? that when you really have to, you do pull it out of the bag. Well, but, uh, when we got down, it, uh, it was quite a bit, bit of a shock, really, because I, uh, I was pretty sore, arms-wise, of hitting so many. Just really bad yeah. there, don't you? Yeah. OK, well, let's see how you did. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. The person in... Uh, where are you? The person out at the top will be definitely safe. The person at the bottom will definitely be jumping. So let's reveal who it is in first place. Marcus, you are in first place. You are not jumping tonight. Marcus has been limbering up in case he will be jumping, but he will not be jumping. You can relax. So, Steve, either you or Darren will definitely face the jump. So, let's take a look. So, so Steve Redgrave in second place there with 45.786. Actually, very close. Um, Darren in third with 47.418. So, that means, Darren, you are jumping tonight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, Darren, you can go get ready. Um, Steve isn't safe yet. You're not quite safe yet. Whether he joins Darren on the jump is all down to our final contestant of the night. Um, he's been reunited with his boy band tonight. Let's hope he's not reunited with his dinner. How high up? Are we going to go? Some of these oh, corners talking? are a good sort of seven metres. I can tell Richie is really nervous. He wants to know everything about the course. And how close is your head? Yeah, that's what you're going to be seeing. He has so many questions. Tap yeah. left and you won't go right. Is that right? That's one little tip that I hear that you can pick it up. If there's anything that I can do to make it a little bit better or easier, that's why I ask the questions. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so dangerous. Oh. You are holding on for your life. Oh. I didn't enjoy it. You know, you're like, oh, God, what's the next Ben going to bring, you know? Don't want to topple on that thing. Although he's not enjoying himself, Richie holds a good position on the sled. This is not just fun and games. Just want to get to the bottom. It's a nice little outrun. And know that I'm OK. Welcome to Richie. Welcome, Richie. Good evening, people. Um, you look really scared there. 
do you know, I wasn't scared the first run. I thought, oh, yeah, this is looks smooth, it's easy. And I did one run, and everybody's face is drained of colour, and mine too. I was like, I, I can't believe it. I feel like I've been beaten up by a pack of wolves. So it was that first run, and that just set you up for the whole of the rest that of the event? It. Yeah, that was it. Then it was just like, oh, I, 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 what could happen? I, I felt a few times like it was going to flip over. And, you know, as you saw in the VTs of the pros doing it, when it flips over, I, I just didn't want to yeah, be doing that. Yeah, it's nasty. It's nasty at speed. So, uh, Darren, we already know, is facing the jump. You are our last competitor oh. of the night, so either you or Steve will be joining him. Okay. Richie, it's race time. Okay. Oh, is it Richie? Yeah, fun for it, yeah. The last to take on this icy course is ex-boy band singer Richie Neville. Oh, look at the fear in his eyes. <laughs> but he sang five, will make you get down. I've got news for him. So will this sled, and even faster. Oh, oh. He's made a good, comfortable start. Nice. Holding his line very well indeed. Nice and high, which should give him some extra speed. He's hot on Marcus's heels. There's the split time. That's the fastest of all the men today. Oh. Oh. Looks beautifully balanced. Oh, 96.38 kph. He's like a rocket. On the right hand, he holds that well. And he comes to the finish. Oh, will that final bump be costly? Only time will tell, and the time will tell. Yeah! I love it, Richie, because at the end, at the end, you're always like, I'm alive! That's all it is. I don't think I've won. I'm just going, yes, I'm alive. <laughs> so... You've already had to face the jump once to stay in the competition. Yes, I'm I'd sure, like a sick note. Don't I'm want sure to do that you don't want to do that again. So you need to be in first or second place to be safe. Okay. Have you made it? Let's have a look at the final leaderboard and see who is in first place. If it's you, Steve and Darren, you guys will face the jump tonight. So the person in first place is... That's an amazing time, an amazing, amazing time, 44.814, so congratulations, Richie. Thank you are the men's skeleton winner! Yes. Yes. Steve, you need to go up over there and relax. Oh. Steve, please will you come and sit next to me? So Steve and Darren, you are facing the jump tonight. Okay. Wasn't what I planned for. No. <laughs> now, the principle of ski jumping is that the bigger the ramp, the longer the jump. So, Steve, which jump will you be choosing tonight? The middle. The K24. Fantastic. OK, Darren, which jump are you going to be choosing tonight? Well, do you know something? I'm not going to play a snap. I'm going to let him be the big boy and go off big, uh, middle bear. I'm going off baby bear and I'm going to jump properly. Yeah, because... <laughs> that the last few times we've seen you go off the middle bear, you have had an almighty crash. You could say that. I've had a couple of crashes, but listen, I've got a job on as a crash dummy come next season, oh, so fantastic. No, we, we worry about you. Has it, has it, do you think, clouded your mind? You, you don't want to go off the middle one, you just, you'd rather just play it safe? Of course it has. I mean, uh, before, uh, when we first came out here, I was off the middle within a couple of days, jumping really, really well, confident. But a couple of falls, at the I speed know. you have it, people don't realise, uh, when you go off that little one and you're jumping 11 metres, that's a long way. So uh, well done uh, to Sunita last night and Richie on the first night. There were some big jumps, so if I can get anywhere, that, anywhere near that, I'll be well happy. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, both of you. You can go off and go and get ready. Good luck to both of you. Come on, boys! OK, while well, they do that, Alex is with the winner of the men's skeleton, Richie Neville! <laughs> Congratulations, mate. This is Thank a bit you, of a contrast from the first show. Oh, mate, I can't believe it. Yeah, bottom to top. Yeah, you see. Wow, amazed. I'm so happy. I'm <laughs> taking a little down Well, let's bring in your drink. Oh, fantastic. You fantastic. And, fantastic. and also mine that I do nothing physical to Alex, deserve. Alex, here's, here's to Stephen Goffey. Cheers. <laughs> man off, Alex, man off. I don't even deserve a drink. This is my karma. <laughs> Yeah, you don't deserve... Well, what are you doing? Drinking every night! So, either Steve or Darren will be leaving the competition tonight. Oh, it's the cricketer versus the rower. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to The Jump, and we are live in Austria, where Steve and Darren were the slowest in the men's skeleton, and they will now face the jump to stay in the competition. The celebrity who jumps the furthest will make it through to their next event. So there they are making their way up. Let's see how they did in training.
Don't like the feeling of it. Don't like the look of it. Don't want to do it. With Steve's competitive nature, he's determined not to let the jump beat him. You can't do a program called the jump if you're not going to jump. So, let's go do it again. What's the choice? You either go back, 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 or you got to do it. Steve has worked hard to perfect a clean, safe jump, but he doesn't always jump as far as the others. To stay in the competition, he can't afford to play it safe tonight. That's how he spit, boys. All I can picture it to is if you were on an aeroplane and you were sat off and the door was open and you were going to jump out without a parachute. <laughs> With Darren's no fear attitude, he's thrown himself into the training and on a good day, he can jump the furthest. But the trouble is, with Darren, it's very unpredictable and it can either be spectacular or catastrophic. Good fall. He's taken more tumbles than anyone else. Oh! He's good at falling. <laughs> he's mastered that. Fall after fall after fall, and I've took some big hits. But I keep getting my cup there, and I will keep doing that. On the night, it could go either way. So, Steve versus Darren, the battle of the sporting giants. Our first jumper is Darren. He's chosen K15, the small jump, and he's ready at the top. Barry Davis and Eddie Edwards are in the commentary box. Well, they came up the travelator separately. This is a real contest. To use a cricket analogy for Darren Goff, it's a bit like bowling the final over in a T20. He has to get everything right. He has to set a target for Steve Redgrave. Away he goes. And he lands, and he takes the applause. That was spectacular. He pulled out a spectacular one. That was a great, steady in run. Fantastic launch. What a jump. He'll be very, very pleased with that. Well, I think you can say, whatever happens, this was a triumph <laughs> for Darren Goff. When it mattered, he did his best. If his best is good enough, he'll still be with us tomorrow. If not, he's competed. Eddie's saying that that was an absolutely magnificent jump, but I think you knew that. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. I loved it. I was nervous there, it really was. And that was an amazing, well, it looked like an amazing distance from that jump. Well, I've no idea. Do you know something? I was just pleased to get down. I really was. It's been a, an odd week for me. So to get down, massive bonus, massive bonus. I'm really pleased for you. Um, OK, so let's have a look and see how far you jumped. Yeah, that was the idea. Um, I have gone bigger um, off the other one, but um, I had to play it safe today with the falls I've had and the injuries I've had. So 12 metres, I'm happy. If I got on that, Steve deserves to go through, so good luck to him. Thanks. Well, Steve is about to attempt the K24, the medium jump. Can he beat Darren's distance to stay in the competition? Ah, that's a target, certainly. But it's a beatable target going from the bigger hill. Taking his time. Steve Redgrave, he knows what it's like to get it right at the finish. I think Steve's going to rely on the speed much, much faster than the 24-metre jump, and I think he's going to rely on that. He doesn't have to jump quite as hard. He'll use that speed to his benefit. Just look at the concentration on his face there. Big, deep breaths. Carrying the medals with him, it seems. Not really, of course. And here he goes. Can he get off? the top that was actually quite a good jump he had a quite a good set himself in the in run not he didn't jump as hard as he could have done uh, was a little bit forwards a little bit unsteady on his feet but it was still a very good jump i think he'll be quite pleased has he done enough though oh they've both done their best and they've both done a good jump yeah, I know where I put my money, but I'm not saying it's all yours, Davina. Um, Steve, I was really impressed with that jump, but you didn't look so impressed. What was going through your mind? Uh, the window is a bit warm in there. I had to un unwind the windows very quickly. <laughs> not very balanced, um, but uh, no, I I've got no idea where I landed. Normally, know I normally know where I land, but I've got no idea. Should we find out? So, are you still in the game? The distance you have to beat is 12 metres. That's what Darren did. 
Have you managed it? Who is staying with us tonight? Steve, your jump measured at... 14.5 metres. Yes, you did enough. We will see you in your next event. Well done, Steve. Well done, mate. Well done. How are you feeling? Fine. Absolutely fine. I give it my all. Like I say, I took some big falls. I've had some injuries. At least now I can go home, have a bottle of Laurent Perrier Rosé and put some ice back on all my injuries. Happy. Great show. Big round of applause for Darren, everybody. It's uh, horrible being up there. My whole plan was not to do any jumps at all, and uh, it's a third show. I'm jumping. It's yeah, a good omen. I've got right. some bad sports to come. You jumped and you won, so well done. Darren is our third celebrity to leave the competition. Um, sorry to see you go, but thank you so much to Eddie Edwards, Barry Davis, Amy Williams, and of course the brilliant Alex Brooker. And we'll be seeing you back here tomorrow night at 8 pm when the girls face the giant. You're brilliant. The giant slalom. <laughs> it should look a bit like this. is the most technical of all of the alpine disciplines it's a race against the clock you have to carry speed all the way through the turn you can't just let it rip like you can in downhill you can't just get away with having quick feet like you can in slalom that's why it's so difficult to master this will be the purest test of our athletes skiing ability you winded yeah. it's a long progression from here to the skiing in dark slalom <laughs> The mental aspect of giant slalom is about taking an aggressive line. The tighter you can ski on the gates, the quicker you'll be. An awful lot can go wrong. And it can go wrong quite fast as well. Ah! Moving it, and she's down. Oh, what a shame.